Everybody loves birthday parties. And air horns. Nothing makes that special day special more than ear-blasting surprise noises. And it's fun for everyone at the restaurant. Being loudly sung to by a room full of strangers is the magnum opus of special day. And being a server that is forced to pretend to be happy for strangers is every little boy and girl's dream. I'm David Sidebotham. This is Stupid Things People Do and What We Can Learn From Them. And I have a word for you about birthdays. It's probably obvious by now that I'm not a fan of surprise parties, especially at restaurants. Now, I know some people feel very differently. They're not curmudgeons, you see, whereas I steal the joy of others. Or rather, thieving joy is what a certain Barry Barak out in Louisville, Kentucky was accused of. Quick aside, obviously that's not his real name, but the guy has gone through a lot, so we're going to do our usual thing and anonymize him in the retelling. All right, so what happened? Why are Barry and I thieving that joy? Well, we don't like surprise birthday parties. In my case, I don't like them because I'm a direct descendant of the Grinch. In his case, he doesn't like them because he has an actual anxiety disorder, complete with panic attacks and everything. So he doesn't like being the center of attention. So, I mean, no problem, right? David and Barry don't like parties, don't do them. And no, see, that would be allowing free will and choice. And the first thing to learn about being a manager is never let the servants decide things for themselves. They might actually start to believe they have opinions that matter or something. All right, so the attorneys say that even sarcastically, I probably shouldn't call employees servants. And they wanted me to clarify that the whole point here is to cultivate a healthy and respectful relationship between management and their direct reports. It's not about ruling, it's about moving towards common goals and mutual benefit. And that is the ideal for how an organization should be structured. But that's not what happened here. Management had the birthday bash anyway. In their defense, they probably just forgot, and it could have ended there. Unfortunately, stupidity tends to be pattern behavior. So, of course, it didn't. When Barry had a panic attack, like he said he would, his supervisors chastised him for stealing his coworkers' joy and being a little girl. And that's wow on two levels. One, way to tip your hand. Forcing a party on a person with a disability in the name of corporate joy? Not exactly making the day about them. And what kind of drunken wallaby thinks that panic attacks are a gendered issue? Quick aside, neither Telios teaches nor its affiliates endorses drunkenness in combination with marsupials or any other kind of Australian wildlife. Or you know substance abuse in general. That is how you get on this vlog. Anyway, after those accusations, understandably, Barry had another panic attack and he got fired for that one. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is retaliation, and it's a stupid thing. From here, it's pretty straightforward, and it's a short trial. It took two days, and the jury awarded Barry $300,000 for emotional distress and $150,000 in lost wages. And his supervisors learned an important lesson in not being a jerk. JK. No, they didn't. Or at least they don't seem to have. You see, BBC reached out to Gravity Diagnostics, the company in question, for comment. And Gravity Diagnostics' take on the matter was that their employees were the victim, not the plaintiff. They alleged with ever-increasing incidents of workplace violence, this verdict sets a very dangerous precedent for employers, and most importantly, employees, that unless physical violence actually occurs, workplace violence is acceptable. Now, if that's got you scratching your head, yeah, the jury reacted the same way. Barry had a panic attack, not some kind of DC comic book villain origin story psychotic break. And once the jury got to meet Barry, they kind of felt the workplace violent claims were maybe a little overwrought. What does this all mean for us? What can we learn from this? Well, one of the things I already touched on, work is hard. And lots of jobs, especially in the service industry, are really hard. People are forced to do things they don't want to do every day just to make ends meet. The point of workplace birthday parties and other such perks and benefits is to try to soften that daily grind. Think of it as a tiny point in the workday where employees actually have control over their work life. In general, giving your employees agency can go a long way to ease what might otherwise be a very difficult job. Agency and volition are obviously not everything, but they are important. And forcing birthdays or after work activities or other mandatory participation morale building exercises, it's not going to be effective at building morale. Best practices aside, disabilities are protected under ADA 
And retaliation against someone for having or reporting a special need that is protected under ADA is extraordinarily illegal. In this case, the retaliation was firing. But any number of negative employment actions could be considered retaliation. I'm out of time, so I can't go into them all right here, but I've got some schemes for a new series I think you're going to like. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.